This video is inspired by a video by another YouTuber called Deborah Mamoudi. I really like this YouTuber. I really like this person. She's defending the vulnerable children especially. Somebody, somebody that is close to my heart, an ally, people that are actually understanding the vulnerability that is part of our nature. Children represent not just themselves as being children, but also a part within us. We are vulnerable in essence in so many ways. We are curious. A curious person is a vulnerable, vulnerable person because we're open. We're open. Vulnerability is about being open. Who is more open than children? Who is more open than children? And I want to clarify my star. Uh, this is a reference to uh, a concept in the Renaissance. It has nothing to do with the devil and the devil worship, you know, I think they turn it upside down. It's like uh, you, you, you got it like this or something and the horns. No, 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 no. This is the idea of the golden rule, the golden rule, and it's representing the person, the person, the person, the head, the arms, the legs, the star represents, and it's been hijacked. It was taken by the communists and the Cuban revolution and the revolutions and all the political stuff around it. But in essence, it's Da Vinci's you know, man standing in a circle in the proportion. That's what this star is about anyway. This is in response. Uh, Deborah Mahmoudi had has had to uh, disable comments, so I can't comment. I like to comment. I like when I hear a YouTube, I like to comment on something, but she can't do it because she's been so trolled and punished by the attack dogs. Anyway, her last one was on Chris Hedges. And in the video, she brought up uh, quite a number of points the nature of our circumstances and what I consider to be what we're living in this culture of death. We're not living our birthright, people. We are not even close to our birthright because we are subjugated to a culture, a culture that primarily with, fine, uh, it may have attributes that you attach yourself to that's wonderful, even the, the art that's being produced in this culture. And I could go through the art how it appears to be of such high value, but it really has no significance and meaning to us. Where when we get down to it, there is such a challenge we have in front of us in order to extricate all the superfluous and negative things out of our lives. And culture is basically an institutionalized piling on of worthlessness and destruction. That's why I, that's why I call it the culture of death. And she's picking on Chris Hedges for good reason. I, I love this. I mean, Chris Hedges, you know, his entire repertoire of uh, magnificence. I have, I have my, it's beyond a suspicion that he is in a sense part of this culture of death, a controlled opposition. The, the material that Chris Hedges has presented to us makes a lot of sense. But then when it gets down to it, when it gets down to actually recognizing and representing himself in an interview, he's apparently talked about Trump. He has empathetic feelings toward a guy like Trump. Now, it, it breaks apart. Trump apparently is raging against the excessive liberalism that's out there, and Trump's rage towards something out there it has nothing to do with what's out there it's all about himself and the greed of the oligarchs the oligarchs are defending their territory and chris hedges is endorsing a person that is defending the right for oligarchs to have complete and total control in this culture of death this is fabulous i mean how can i how can i not make a comment about this and in the in this in this presentation Deborah Mahmoudi brings up the idea that uh, life is cheap. Now, I would like, maybe I would call this, I've been wanting to do a video like this, why is life cheap or life is cheap? Uh, whichever way, why is life cheap or why life is cheap? Uh, they're two different, there's a nuance there. It means I have a conclusion or I have an understanding or I have a question. Which one is it? Is it a question or is it actually a conviction? And it's both, because from the point of view of what I understand to be the culture that I live in, life is cheap. It's a conclusion. And the question is, why is life cheap? Now that becomes very interesting. Why is life cheap? And people will say, no, of course not. 
Do you see the elaborate pharmaceutical system we have built around the medical system, that snake that winds around the pole? Why is it the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm? That was out the window a long time ago already. What is it that makes life cheap in our culture? What, what is going on? This is, a, this is a thing I've been actually wanting to do a video on, why life is cheap in the culture that we exist in right now. And people like Chris Hedges confirm once more, we, we need to be very careful of, the pe of someone that we trust that says all the right things. Days of destruction, days of revolt. He's, ta he's talking about uh, a Jersey town called Cam uh, Camry, I don't know what it's called. But the essence within Hedges is that his material becomes irrelevant if he doesn't see the fundamental of that, of that weak platform that he is standing on. He's wearing a suit, a tie, he gets a paycheck, he's within a system that has functioned for him. It has functioned for him. And this is a dilemma because as you are absorbed into, into this culture, it tends to have benefit the way it has given Chris Hedges, even though he appears to have been out on the, in, in the trenches, maybe in the old days when he was on the left, he was out in the Middle East reporting for, I think, the New York Times. He was the, the desk, the Middle East desk, exposing the Zionist, the Zionist destruction of that area, but he's come back into the fold in some way, and they're letting him publish and do what he does because he's somehow what is considered possibly to be controlled opposition is if you allow a person like this to, pro, to, to, to propagate a lot of ideas that make sense, but ultimately fail on the most fundamental aspect of our need, what we need as, as people in general and personally to not understand that this system is fundamentally eroding anything that is of value in terms of our, what I always refer to our birthright, we need to come back to fundamentals in understanding the value of life. What is the value of life? I'll get into the guts of this now. What is, why is life cheap in the culture that we are, that we attach ourselves to? And why, why is that happening? Why is that happening? And I've said, I've said this, the idea of birthright is Fundamentally, the notion, the, I would even like to say, a universal law that each being, humans, other life forms, have the right to exist without needing any explanations, any elaborate rule book, all those volumes and volumes of dissertations on why something is right or wrong. We don't need it. There is no explanation needed. And as we... As we escalate through a system that creates more and more rules to sanctify life, it actually erodes the very essence of our birthright by giving, by adding one more rule why it is important to have the right to exist. It creates, it deteriorates the fundamental position that we have as living beings on this, on this earth, in this existence. There is no requirement for us to justify our existence to anyone or anything. We exist equally. All life exists, not because it's defended by any rule book, but be, or 10 commandments or 15 commandments or a million rules. Life is the sanctuary, the, the sanctity, the sanctity of our essence is life, life itself. Why would you have to explain that? And in order for us to be able to truly, to truly feel this, the only way, I believe, I believe, the only way we can truly connect to this, this, this universal gift is to live our highest self, our birthright. At some point or other, we need to get to this. We need to get to this in order to be able to, I don't know what that, to absorb this, this phenomenal magnificent reality that we are, who we are, from the very moment we're conceived. This is so incredibly 
powerful, wonderful to understand that. And then everything is piled on top of that. I hope you're following this. This is like why life is cheap is because we create reasons. We create reasons why life is important. Obviously, we have our connections to each other. When we love someone, you don't have to explain to yourself well, all the reasons why. Well, in the same way, it's like universally, generally speaking, we don't need to have a lot of explanations why it is we love. And this is what's happening in culture. Culture is basically, uh, litanies and litanies of reasons and rules why things are the way they are, like these intellectuals, like Hedges. I confronted him at, the, at one of his book launches. I forget which book it was. I said, uh, Mr. Hedges, uh, I appreciate all the, all the wonderful things you're exposing about this culture and the bastards out there. And by the way, there was a nuclear plant that blew up called Fukushima. Do you know what's do you have any sense of this? He said, well, what, what was it called? This was like in 2014, I think, or some, somewhere around two years after, three years after Fukushima. And he had no clue. He had no clue. So how can this person have any relevance? And people say, well, just because he doesn't know your little pet peeve fight. No, this is a universal fight when all life is threatened. And he's supposedly on, the, on, on my side defending us against the bastards who are trying to undermine us and as Deborah Mahmoudi has pointed out in her in her last video on uh, words spells and suicide he totally misses the boat he can't he can't figure this out what the hell is the essence of our being here you can write and make dissertations forever and ever and if you don't get the the basics sorted out why life is so valuable if you have to actually, for me to have to say this about this guy, is it, it irritates me to no end to have respected his writing and to have read stuff. I totally discard everything he produces, even though, even though, like I say, he makes great points. But if you miss, if you miss it on a fundamental level, you miss the whole thing. It doesn't make any difference to me anymore. It's, it's kind of a radical position to take because you always say to yourself, well, there is something good I can take out of even some degenerate may come up with something valuable to me. It's like saying Mengele's experiments in Auschwitz on children is valuable to the medical system, the pharmaceutical system. How, how can you actually take something out of that? To, to take the advances that supposedly, you know, I don't believe Mengele had any advances in his thing, they're just making it up. But this is the reasoning behind it, that, oh, this, this complete, uh, complete total barbarian, this, this ruthless, nasty piece of uh, junk on the planet, he was no life form, he was some other kind of being that was uh, placed into our midst in order for us maybe to understand that, don't do that. Don't be that way. That maybe that's the lesson. That's the only good lesson out of Mengele. He did not produce anything of value for the pharmaceuticals that would help me. I want no part of it. I want no part of whatever Mengele figured out with the torture of the children and the killing of the children that he did in the camps. I want no part of it. So anyone else, I want no part of the intelligence and the brilliance of the Hedges type if they don't understand that the most valuable valuable, the essence of ourselves, the birthright, the, the very essence of us, the life we carry, is, uh, requires no explanation whatsoever. It is. And if you miss that, you're going to miss everything else along the way. Anyway, I want to thank uh, Deborah Mahmoudi for that posting. And uh, yeah, the, I, I think that covers it. I mean, uh, why life is cheap? Why is life cheap? Why life is cheap? Uh, do you get do, do you get my gist here? It's like uh, this is so fundamental. I it's like you wake up in the morning and you're breathing. We're breathing, and the reason we're breathing is because there's a mystery. There's a mystery, people. Nobody knows why things work the way they work. What the hell is this experience that we're having? Nobody knows. We can add our kind of stuff to it. I, I, I really dislike the idea of 
of uh, articulating like a, a, in a sentence the subject, the predicate idea of living. It's like, it's not like that. It's, it's more like what I feel attuned to in a painting. There is a, is a sort of organic joining of something that comes together and with colors and if you're working musically with sound, with, with, with that sort of, uh, we use our senses to connect to this mystery in some way and language isn't a really good way of doing it, possibly poetically, I'm not inclined toward language, I'm more visual or, you know, auditory, I'm more a listening and seeing kind of person rather than intellect word stuff, even poetically speaking. I do have some favorite people I read, but I, yeah, I, I could go on why life is cheap and it's because our birthright is being undermined. That's why I know life is cheap and until we recognize within ourselves, life will always be cheap. We can never recover or re rejuvenate this unless we have this fundamental notion, not in an arrogant way, not with hubris, not with somehow uh, you're entitled to whatever. We earn, we earn our birthright. We are alive. Every creature on this planet is supposed to be here. We are alive. There is no explanation required, but we earn it. As a human being, I'm saying, and the most highest part that I've understood, of course, the loving principle. But in this loving principle is our conscience that we do no harm. We do no wrong. We do the right thing every day. And it's a learning process. We make mistakes, we fix it. That's why I say I love honesty because honest people recognize when they've, when they've done something that's wrong. They say, I'm sorry. And remember, it's a lot harder to ask for forgiveness than to forgive. So all you people out there, you Christian thumping fundamentalist types who are always forgiving everybody, look at yourself for a change. Ask for forgiveness because it's a lot harder. That's, that's why life is cheap because you're always forgiving someone else. Look at yourselves.